welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a video for you which is very very different. Something you're not really used to seeing from me. But I wanted to share with you a little bit of my creative side. I'm a very creative person by heart. I've just always been this way. Ever since I was a kid I was always a massive fan of trainers. In particular Nike trainers or sneakers depending on where you live. However I've noticed over the years You've got to enter raffles and the prices of trainers are so expensive etc and sometimes you just don't get the one that you actually really want and that's where i started to do things like customizing my own trainers and that's what i'm going to be sharing with you guys or showing with you guys how i have been doing them recently these were the first ones that i ever did um about two to three months ago these are just your standard classic nike borough lows they were completely white and they are leather and I bought some leather paint and basically designed how I wanted my own ones to look. Now this video is specifically for leather trainers because I'm going to be using leather paint. I'm going to be doing a voiceover as I film the video too because I have to share the kitchen with my mum who's cooking and listening to the radio at the same time. Plus I also don't want to kind of interrupt the flow. And hopefully some of you guys will find this kind of video useful and helpful in maybe potentially customising your trainers yourself one day. It's actually a lot easier than it looks. All that is required is patience. So today I'm going to be customising again some Nike Borough Lows. They're actually a gift for my best friend. After she saw me do mine she wanted a pair of her own. So we're going to be going pastel again but this time we're going to be going green, lilac and yellow. And that's it really. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, make sure you subscribe to my channel and enjoy. <laughs> First thing we need to do is prep our trainers by using the leather preparer and deglazer by Angelus Paints. But I would always suggest using some rubber gloves. Please use better ones than I did. The ones I used were accidentally cheap and awful because the deglazer actually contains acetone and I'm wearing nail polish so you can guess what happened already. So anyway, saturate a cotton ball if you've got one lying around as much as possible. And then basically what we're gonna be doing is removing the factory finish which is over the trainers. So you need to make sure that you apply in every single area where there is leather so that the actual paint itself will, will adhere to the trainers properly and just make sure that you let it dry afterwards. Yep, look, see my nail polish came off. So this is a warning to you guys. It ruined my nails, sad times, man. So this is like some sort of masking tape, which I actually got from the company I bought this from. I will link everything below. This will come in handy for people that are beginners. I am now kind of going a bit freehand, but what I was doing previously was applying it to the base and then digging in with my nail. Obviously I'm not being very neat here, but this is a good way to stop it getting onto the rubber soles of the shoes because this is leather paint. Let's start painting anyway. So we're gonna use a lilac acrylic leather paint from Angelus. And again, it's completely up to you how much you decide to apply. I just used a dirty old plastic cup I had. Got some of the white paint as well, which always comes in handy to mix it up. And I'm using the Angelus paint brushes the five piece set because these are absolutely excellent the fibers stay together so there's no flicking of the paint this is the number half angular brush which i'm going to be using today so you can see that when you apply the white you can kind of tone down the color depending on what you want it to look like add a little bit more if possible it's always better to start off darker and apply more you can't obviously go backwards you end up wasting paint now I'm going to be fast forwarding this video because obviously a lot of it is going to be quite repetitive but I am actually going quite slowly and as you can see very gently going over the edges. Now the one thing you need to do is probably for the entire part of the purple I'll be using I'll probably dip in my brush once because you're actually meant to apply very 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 pale and faint layers. You should still be able to see the white underneath because if you layer the paint too thickly it will start to crack eventually as you walk wear and tear that sort of thing so what it is important to do in particular with these kind of pastel colors is to slowly build up the color
here's what it looks like with one layer on one of the shoes as you can see it's quite patchy and that's how it's supposed to be now I'm going to move on to the other shoe because what I've decided to do is use the same colors but do them in different places on the shoes so we're going to be going in with the shade mint this time again blobbing in how much I think is appropriate depending on how much space I'm going to be using of the color on the shoe mix it up with some white and the brush I'm using is the number six flat brush mixing it all together just to make it that little bit shade lighter and then going in with a very light hand again I do apologize for the light because I'm actually using natural light to film this video and it was a cloudy day so in some instances it may be a bit darker it may be a bit lighter but I hope it doesn't ruin your viewing experience you guys so this is me just painting it all over so I'll just let you watch So this is the green done on the front and the back of the shoe you can see it's a little bit patchy obviously because I've mixed it with white so that means I will have to layer it next we're going to be using the shade pale yellow I'm not mixing it with white this time because I actually wanted this yellow to slightly pop but you can mix it with white to make it that little bit lighter and the brush that I'm using is the number six filbert brush by the way I'm just using any old brushes I'm from this actual packet I'm not specifically using it it's just up to you like in terms of the space that you're going to be working with to use the brush brush size even that is appropriate so I'm going to be on this uh, purple shoe I'm going to be doing the Nike swoosh in a nice yellow color looks great One thing I wanted to mention was the drying time. Now, because I'm using very light layers and pastel, it's normally touch dry between 10 to 15 minutes, but that's why it's also a good reason to go backwards and forwards between the shoes, because as I'm working on one shoe, the other part of the other shoe is drying, if that makes sense. So therefore, there's no like waiting time in between for me to wait for layers to dry, because you should ideally only layer up once uh, a particular area has dried, so that it doesn't become patchy. wanted to quickly jump in here and say I did use the masking tape as you can see on the tongue so that it helps to protect that area from accidentally getting paint on it I will be showing you how to remove accidental damages by the way so this is the both the shoes completely finished there is one layer on every single thing so I just wanted to see, show you guys what it would look like in the first instance just with one layer of paint now again to stop myself being repetitive I'm going to be telling you guys that I'm going to be doing layers now just to build up that color and to make it completely opaque without the issue of cracking happening later so I did all together on the purple and the green I did three layers of paint and on the yellow I did two and again that's probably because I didn't actually apply any white to that shade so that made it a lot more opaque a lot more quickly but again going with very very light layers I have been known to do four layers so this is what the shoes look like complete without anything on top actually they're still wet so they've got that slight sheen to them but I just wanted you guys to see what it should look like once the shoes have been freshly painted and then we're going to kind of do a little bit of work of tidying up some areas where I accidentally got paint so you take that same deglazer take a cotton bud or anything similar to a cotton bud dip it in and then what you just need to do is just run it across those areas as you can see I got a little bit of green there a little bit of purple there and it completely removes 
the actual um, paint. This deglazer is actually good at removing dirt, grease, grime, other kinds of damage. If you've made massive mistakes, you can wipe it off and start again. It's excellent. Now to finish it off, we're going to be using the matte acrylic finisher. And I'm just going to be using the largest brush that I've got is the number 10 flat brush. And then I apply it to every single part of the shoe which has been painted and even the bits that haven't for uniformity because obviously I cleaned off that factory finish so I sort of want to bring it back when this dries it will dry completely matte at the moment it's obviously you can see it's kind of got a white kind of milkyish texture and I don't go in too heavily because otherwise what will happen it was it will drip and pool down the bottom of the shoe so just apply this as generously as possible and then what I will do is now leave it to dry for 24 hours before I put the laces in and finish. So that's the end result. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.